Hi. So, who is the idol in your life? Um, you know, I was learning about idolatry. So, um, try this exercise, okay? Make a list of all the things that are important to you. You might say, like, you can't live without them, right? Uh, number the list in order of priority. One being most important. Um, obviously, people will probably have God on the list. Um, other things might be a spouse or your children, your job, your hobbies. Um, things you might be uh, pursuing even or things... You already have, uh, you know, if you want to get married, you want to have a child. Um, I wrote this test down because I ended up having to give it to myself. And, of course, because I asked the question, I definitely um, been fed the answers um, with God this past week. So, um, but anything you see as being extremely important in your life needs to be on your list, right? So, what are you waiting for? Go, go get a pen and a paper. Don't worry, I'll wait. Uh, so you can make your list. Take your time, I'm waiting. Um, pause the video if you have to. Because uh, it's important to do it. Because uh, idolatry is making anything in your life more important than God. Um, we think as long as we um, list God as number one on our list, um, then we don't have idols. Um, however, I'd like to suggest to you that that is an insufficient definition for sure. Furthermore, everything on your list, with the exception of God, um, might already be an idol in your life, regardless of where you rank them in priority. Um, making a good thing an ultimate thing um, is, is not a good thing at all. Uh, no creation should be more important. Only the creator, right? God doesn't want to be your top God. He wants to be your only God. When we serve the creation and not the creator, then we are committing what's called idolatry. Big, big no-no, apparently. So, blasphemy, I still want to do some more research on. I don't have a whole lot of lesson on. I think a lot of my understanding, and again, I know you're saying not to lean on your own understanding, but what I've understood so far is like basically rejecting God or, or rejecting you know, someone that's trying to give uh, the word or, you know, whether or not listening to it or rejecting that it's true or, or well, God really, you know, mocking God or, um, you know, using his, his name in vain, um, things like that. So if I get more from, from you know who, um, I'll, of course, I'll share it, anything I have. So this week was um, tough. <laughs> And it really was getting me to go, wow. I, you know, I found myself even frustrated at times going, is it because I asked for a dollar? Is, I, is it because I asked for lessons? Because I asked for the lesson? Um, because I realized that I, without even, you know, meaning to, that I was putting my kids at, you know, a higher, um, I, I almost felt like, is it like almost put them on the altar? Like it's, it's. You know, my loving, I'm not loving my kids more than I am you, God. I just, um, I thought it was a good thing to be, you know, the best mom I can be because, especially because I didn't grow up in, you know, such a loving environment. Um, but I guess what he's been showing me is, um, you know, you shouldn't reward uh, bad behavior, though. Um, you know, my adult kids, if they're not um, kind you know, um, to be, be firm, you know, always be fair and firm back. Um, but you know, you're about, I'm just as important to have boundaries as they are. And so as we teach our kids, I see what he meant by the honoring the mother and the father. And then I think back and go, Oh, did I break that commandment? Because, you know, sometimes I don't speak, you know, kindly of, of my mom and it's, it's not even again, realizing that I'm doing it. So, you know, it's a it's a lesson on humility. Um, I've been doing a lot of that too. You know, eating a big piece of humble pie because I definitely, again, don't want to not practice what I preach. So, speaking of the Ten Commandments, though, uh, when I first wrote them, I based it off copying out of like a Bible that I had, and I realized there are different types um, of Bibles. Um, 
I know I was gifted one from the Rock Church. That's really easy to understand. You know, the biggest thing with wanting to understand the Bible is, um, you know, that the King James Version is a real common one, that that's the one I feel like I look into it. I'm like, thee, thou, and shall, and, you know, it's really confusing for me. And I, I find myself scratching my head going, well, what does it say? What does it mean? But the new, you know, international version, I think it's called, is a really nice one. It's really basic terms and really, really easy, um, you know, to read. So I know King James versions are really common in even in hotel rooms and hospitals. And the reason why I know that is a story I tell Isaiah all the time. His, my pregnancy for my third child, Isaiah, was not favorable. I talk about it more in my book. I'm not going to talk about it here. But the point was I was very emotional. It wasn't at all that I didn't want another child. Um, so when I began to have high blood pressure and seeing stars, about 36 weeks, I went to the hospital. And they, wanted, they did an amniocentesis to check his lungs for maturity because they wanted to take me in for C-section right away. And it said, proceed with caution, is what the doctor told him, said the test. You know, he didn't really explain it. So I was, I was pretty anxious. I was pretty scared. So um, he uh, rushed me back there, and the nurses were trying to calm me down. They kept just saying, you're doing wonderful. You're doing wonderful. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're, you're doing wonderful. And then when he was born and I heard him out cry, uh, they kept saying, he's doing wonderful. He's doing wonderful, right? So I was in the um, recovery room, and I remember, you know, the medications in the IV, and, you know, I'm kind of just staring into space, you know, acknowledging that I just had a baby, and I kept, kept ringing in my ears, wonderful, wonderful, and I'm going, where did I hear that before? And so I p opened the drawer next to the, to the bed, and I looked in the King James, and I opened it up. I literally opened up to 8, 6, right? Isaiah 8, 6. August 6, that's Isaiah's birthday, right? But guess what Isaiah 8, 6 says? And he shall be called wonderful. And I went, wow, if that's not a sign from God, I don't know what is. Um, so he loves that I, you know, tell him that story. Um, but it's true. But the reason why now I think back to it is because the King James Version versus like a, you know, a different Bible, totally different. Just like, you know, people can interpret the Bible uh, differently. So when I wrote the commandments, um, I wrote them over and then I really began to understand them more. Really started to look and go, oh, see, you thought it meant this, but now that it's written out this way, and I'm actually looking into Exodus and reading out where it's coming from and giving the examples and like, oh, I see. I'm like, oh, right? <laughs> Who knew you could read a book and learn something? Um, but then also I, you know, redid them and put them back on my wall because, um, to truly follow the Ten Commandments is important that you know what they are specifically, what they each one stands for. And you don't even realize that you're probably, you know, breaking more than one on a regular basis. And God often has hinted to saying, you know, if you're breaking my commandments, I'm not going to bless you. You know, um, and it, I think about it and I go, but what about the atheists that are, you know, rich? Um, but they don't, but see, they don't stay rich. Um, it, you know, blessings come from God when, when you, he looks, you know, to your heart. And if you're, you know, trying to abide by him and if you're trying to, you know, be blessed by him um, and you're encouraging others and you're doing for others, you know. If you're doing charity work is a big thing, you know, are you, are you pulling out money and handing it out to, you know, someone that needs it or, or if you have it, or if it doesn't even have to be money, it could be clothes. You know, I dug out a bunch of widows, um, you know, clothing that she's outgrew that are in really nice condition, but I just felt the urge to, you know, give it to the church, a couple of trash bags of clothes and then like, you know, foods, um, you know, extra groceries or, you know, stuff stocked up because you're not supposed to be, um, storing you know food and clothing especially things that you're not using and you don't need but that you're giving it to someone that does need it you know that that will you know genuinely appreciate it right so all right i'm gonna get going talk to you guys later okay bye